Hello, and today I need to be showing you how I make my hook steeped <laughs> rag rugs. I have them all around the home, they're really comfy and cosy and they can all be made just with this one simple tool which is a, guess what, <laughs> rug hook. The only other things you need are some hessian sacking and she while we're here my little alibaba well not that little basket of strips of fabric that i'm using for my current project so to give you an idea of all the different things that you can use for making these rag rags this was just cut from an old sheet this was cut from a dog blanket that was similarly worn away in patches didn't meet doggy standards anymore. This was an old t-shirt. I recognise a little bit there of my pink candlewick bedspread that I used to make the house robes. So scraps from sewing projects. All the things that otherwise would have no use whatsoever can be used to make these really decorative rag rugs. So you never need to waste another scrap of fabric. I put that down and what I might do is take you out to the loft where you can see how I store my otherwise unusable fabrics so that I can use them in all kinds of future sewing projects including my rag rugs. We're going up the stairs and I know <laughs> a few of you enjoyed my wallpaper from last week so just to show you as we go upstairs there's a sort of hair theme going on. Up, up to the loft and the loft is soon going to be the subject of a great tidy up ducking under the low ceilings I'm just going to show you what goes on under my cutting out table you get the idea that I have these moth-proof containers underneath the table and this one, for example, has old blankets, night shirts. They're all suitable for rag rugs. Then next door here I have clothes that have either shrunk or are just too small for me or have holes in and they are better than rag rag quality so I would use them for make do and mending into new clothes. We'll have an episode coming up on that soon and then similarly here old beach clothes etc they are rag rag suitable. In my comments somebody asked me what my inspiration was for the pictures that I create on rag rag and I would say it's nearly always illustrations from mainly children's books. Also Art Nouveau postcards, a wonderful rabbit design. Fabric prints can be an inspiration too. I tend to like animals, <laughs> so most of my rag rugs feature animals. Oh, and my last rag rug was inspired by my love of, I know they're like Marmite divide opinion, my Staffordshire ox. And for my next rag rug, my inspiration comes from a book by Susan Hill, and I don't know if you've come across it, but absolutely love them called Miss Moon the dog governess and there's also a Miss Mink the cat countess for cat lovers and she creates these wonderful paintings it's no surprise it appeals to me is it really I've seen her YouTube video on her creation of the character and she says of course that Miss Moon she's obviously vintage or dressed in historical clothing but not from any particular period she has like a Victorian governess gown but her hair is in 1940s victory rolls this is the picture that I'm going to use for my rag rag it's a print from a painting by a local artist the way will translate really well into curly rows into fabric in blues and greens and white for the tips of the waves and then the lines of the boat I can also pick out in lines of the hook rag rugs fluffy clouds and of course this wonderful border collie we know why that appeals to me for a while now I will be cutting bluey green strips blue strips 
reddy brown stitch and of course some black and white as well you can get proper patterns for your fabric if you get really into rag rugs but it's easy enough isn't it to do it with scissors but i'll start by measuring and you can get kits which will have the picture printed on and then you can fill it in so that's an option and there's some very pretty kits you can get but i like to make up my own picture yeah. so I'll start and I'm not a brilliant artist you don't have to be for rag rugs because you're just putting in some guidelines so I measure one felt tip and that is to the bottom of the boat one felt tip so I know that's the center of my canvas and then I measure one felt tip is nearly to the prow of the boat and then half a felt tip is there so I know the prow of the boat is about a third of the way and I just go through like that measuring and then I transfer the guidelines to my hessians. So that's the middle and then I've got the third marked and then I'm just going to sketch in the design. You can see here how I've just sketched in the lines of my sailing boat with the water collie on board looking rather worried then the next stage before i put this in the frame just run a zigzag stitch around the edge of the hessian to stop it unraveling once i've sketched in my design you want a frame but this frame that was specially made but you can buy frames i've centered my design on the frame and i'm just going to pull it tight each side and what I'm trying to do is get it taut enough that the weave will lie completely straight, both widthways and vertically. It does help to have someone else do this with you, actually. Just sticking drawing pins into the wood each side. Here I'm cutting out a strip from this piece of scrap fabric. It doesn't have to be absolutely exact, but I'm going to cut it about one centimetre wide for just as long as this scrap fabric. Mostly I would do this in front of other brown on the telly or something. I've got my strip. This is the one that I'm starting off with. So I'm going to start right in the center of the canvas and I'm taking my strip underneath. In the middle, I'm going to pull it out. Just grab hold of it with the hook. So I've grabbed hold of it with the hook, I've pulled it out. When you begin, you want to leave only one thread in between each loop. I usually make about five loops just next to each other. It's up to you how far you want to pull up your loop. And you can do different effects, like if you had a flower that you wanted to be really frilly, you could pull the loops up higher and then have the leaf with flatter loops. I mean, I just tend to do my loops of an equal length. So I carry on just leaving one thread in between. Once you've got about a little cluster or a tight little line you start leaving two threads in between and for the whole rest of your canvas you're going to leave about two threads in between and that's just enough because otherwise if you just try leaving one all the way along the canvas will become so tight it will be impossible to work and if you leave more than two then you might be left with little gaps of hessian as you can see i haven't actually had enough drawing pins at home to pull this canvas tight so i'm going to do it properly later here is my one that i've nearly finished i've got a loop here that i've been pulling through and you can see what it looks like on i'll show you the back so the back looks not in fact too <laughs> unlike the front just a bit scrappier and back to the front started here in the center of his first patch and then worked outwards and then just did a swirly whirly background but you can see here that the more loops i've done the tighter the hessian gets so that's why by this stage you wouldn't want to go directly into the next thread it would all become too tight and hard to work so you count about two and the reason you don't count more is obviously you don't want spaces on hessian so and you can see what I'm doing is I'm then grabbing 
my fabric you will find like this is a thicker jersey of fabric to the sheeting that i started off with so it's a little harder it's not that hard but it's a little harder to grab and pull through and the more blankety thicker the fabric the the just the little trickier it is to work with though of course it does create a nice texture so and i just follow along like that you can see with the lines i've done here just to sort of delineate his fur how when i do the c for my dog i can actually make sure that all the loops follow each other to create that effect of the c showing you the face here see the eyes look a little bit you know <laughs> but it'll be fine the ears i've done that kind of curly how I'll, I'll do the ways for my dog the kind of curly ears obviously a great artist did not draw this dog it's very easy just to sketch out because you can't go into any kind of fine detail you can feel confident that you'll make something and it will look very pretty i'm just going around the edges at the moment but right at the end what i'll do i haven't left myself much space here actually but i'll do a dark border around the whole rag rug before i turn over to stitch it down I'll stitch it down by hand obviously because I've got all my rag rug loops on top I'll have that dark border around the edge just thought I would show you side by side what is recommended by some rug makers I bought this for £10 and this cost me nothing but according to dire warnings this might deteriorate over time although I've had rugs for many years and it hasn't but I thought I would buy some obviously I use it at some stage uh, just to show you the difference so this is proper rug hooking backing and that's just next to my true shall we say 1940s make to and mend method using uh, unwanted sacks and I love to do my rag rug hooking at the kitchen table when there's a nice cup of tea nearby or perhaps in front of the telly. It really is one of those crafts that you can actually practice and watch TV and know what's going on at the same time. And there are different methods to making rag rugs, but the reason that I love my looped rag rugs is because you can create pictures with them. There are methods of tufting rag rugs where you cut the strips into short tufts and pull them through to create abstract designs. But I love my pictorial designs and they're really easy. As you've seen, you don't need to be a brilliant artist to create these really colourful and fun pictures. And I thought I would take you round to see what a home full of these colourful rag rugs look like. And you can see how much the dogs appreciate rag rugs. They're awfully cosy on the paws and indeed on human feet too. I always like to have a rag rug as a bath mat too and who can know why but the bathroom is the one room that the dogs decide that they're going to give a miss even if it does have a rag rug it's just too close to clean smells and soapy water for them to feel entirely comfortable in that room so i thought i would just show you these two 1940s gadgets and isn't this a wonderful absolutely classic 1940s box the world's fastest airline home rug maker the easy way to make a beautiful rug look at her with her poodle up to as well wonderful so let's open it up and have a look and here is the gadget it goes onto a table. You just tighten up these screws. So you need to put your foot to operate it through here. Let's just have a go. 
I just wanted to show you how needles come up. Luckily, this comes with the original instruction book. With your foot, you pull down on the loop and this needle comes up. And the needle, the eye doesn't go all the way through. You need to thread the fabric strip down. So to do that, you're supplied with, this actually comes with a kit. Very sophisticated, isn't it? You're supplied with this loop. loop thread through your fabric then you push it down the tube here and I'll show you if I bring the camera down it's now coming out at this end here so now you can pull it through your strip at the longest part you're working from the bottom so you have your longest part sorry about the dog bed underneath the table so they like sitting under there so longest part here and then I'll lift it back up, show you what happens now. Place my frame with my hessian over the top. I really needed more drawing pins, so I'm going to need to tighten up this hessian. But now I start pulling, pulling on the loop. <laughs> and I definitely, I need a bit more practice. But we can see that after a fashion, it is work. It will work better if the Hessian was tighter. That's really what I need. But with a bit of practice, I'll show you too another 1940s ragwa gadget. I have a go with these, and you can see how I've just threaded that up and then through the eye. Let's have a go and see what happens. And I can see the principle, I need the hessian to be tighter, but you can see that it is actually forming loops. A bit more practice might be required, get the loops even. My inspiration is going to come from Miss Moon, and I'm going to do a rag rug in which I become Miss Moon, and I'm going to put in all my dogs, past and present, all the pets I've ever had, past, there's quite a few. So it will be me in one of my dresses that I've made. Obviously it's a rag rug, I might not be completely <laughs> recognisable. And all my animals, which will range from, I don't know if I'll include my early hamsters, because on a rag rug it might just look like an indistinguishable little patch of brown, mightn't it? <laughs> Guinea pigs might have a problem with those too, but from rabbits up to the dogs, the larger ones, all my most beloved companions through my life, my animals, will all be on this rag rug. A huge, nostalgic, sentimental piece.